Welcome to lesson one on vapor pressure. Our lesson objectives, determine what affects boiling point, differentiate between evaporation and boiling, and determine the vapor pressure and boiling point of a substance using table H in our reference table. If you've ever left a glass of water out over time, you'll notice that the liquid starts to decrease. That's because it is evaporating. The liquid is turning to a gas. So evaporation is when the molecules at the surface of the liquid gain enough energy from the uh, environment to overcome their attractive forces with each other. Those are called intermolecular forces. And they're going to change to gas. That's a phase change. So as we get more and more gas particles above the liquid, it starts to build up more pressure. This pressure is called vapor pressure. So this vapor pressure is the pressure exerted by the gas, or the vapor, above the liquid at equilibrium. So what is equilibrium? Equilibrium is when the rates of two opposing things are equal. So in this case, the rate of evaporation of our liquid equals the rate of condensation of our gas back to a liquid. So initially, if I have a beaker and I put a top on it, it creates a closed environment. And in this closed environment, we can reach equilibrium. Without the top, then we're going to lose gas to the room, and it will never reach equilibrium. So since this is closed, initially our surface water molecules are going to start to break free of those intermolecular forces and start to turn to a gas. And then these gas particles will start moving around, and eventually over time they'll start to condense back to a liquid. And so we have evaporation going on and condensation back to a liquid. And eventually the rate becomes equal. The rate at which it's evaporating to a gas equals the rate at which it's condensing back to a liquid. That is the liquid vapor equilibrium. And again, it must be in a closed environment. So that was evaporation. What is boiling? Boiling occurs when the vapor pressure, the pressure of the gas above the liquid, becomes equal to or even greater than the atmospheric pressure, the air pressure pushing down up from above. And so at normal atmospheric pressure, we call this the normal boiling point. So what is the atmospheric effects on boiling points? Well, at higher altitudes, such as living in Denver, Colorado, the air pressure is much lower than the air pressure that we have here. And this is due to the decreased amount of air molecules. So if you have a lower pressure, so a lower air pressure pushing down on the, um, the vapor, then water will boil at a lower temperature. And so then if we're trying to cook food, it would take longer to cook. Because if you think of this air pressure almost like, um, like a blanket pushing down, and so if the air pressure is lower, then it doesn't take as much vapor pressure to break through that barrier. And so we can get gas forming at a much lower temperature. So if we look at the um, side of a box of pasta, you'll see at the bottom it says at high altitudes increase cook time one to two minutes. So why are we increasing the time we have to cook at high altitudes? Why can't we cook the pasta for the same amount of time, eight to ten minutes? That's because, if you go back here, there's less air pressure at high altitudes. Less air pressure means that we need less vapor pressure to overcome that lower air pressure. And therefore, it's going to boil at a lower temperature. If it boils at a lower temperature, that means the, the food is not cooking at a higher temperature. It's cooking at a lower temperature. And therefore, it's going to take longer for that food to cook. And so you'll often see these um, additions for high altitude cooking on the side of many types of food items that we have. So looking at boiling and the intermolecular forces, what is that connection? Well, boiling occurs when the heat energy overcomes the attractive forces between the molecules. So if you have stronger intermolecular forces, that means it takes more energy to overcome them, you're going to have a higher boiling point. If you have weaker intermolecular forces of attraction between the particles, that means it's going to require less energy to break them apart, and therefore a lower boiling point. So... We learned about evaporation and boiling, so what's the difference? Well, evaporation occurs only at the surface of our liquid because the air molecules are colliding with the surface of the water 
and that's where they're getting the energy from to overcome their intermolecular forces and turn to a gas. Boiling occurs throughout the entire sample. We can get bubbles, which are just gas being formed from the liquid. Uh, we can get bubbles forming and rising up because the vapor pressure can overcome the atmospheric pressure pushing back down on it. So again, evaporation occurs at the surface and boiling occurs throughout the entire sample. And so we can see that here. So again, evaporation occurring at the surface, they're overcoming their intermolecular forces, where boiling occurs throughout the entire sample because the particles are all getting energy distributed to them throughout the entire sample. So let's check your understanding. Can you determine what affects boiling point, and can you differentiate between evaporation and boiling? So now let's open up our reference table and look at table H, which is vapor pressure of these four liquids, propanone, ethanol, water, and ethanoic acid. And there's a dotted line in here. So let's look at our axes first. We have temperature on the bottom, and we have vapor pressure in kilopascals on the vertical axis. Again, vapor pressure is the pressure of the gas above the liquid. And so the dotted line says 101.3 kilopascals. Table A tells us that's the standard pressure. We say at sea level. That's the pressure of air pushing down upon us. And so this dotted line represents the normal boiling point of these four substances here. And so for water at normal pressure, if you go across and you go down, you'll see it says 100 degrees Celsius. And that will change when the vapor pressure changes, which means that's when the air pressure is changing. So again, at high altitudes, we'd see a lower air pressure, lower vapor pressure, and boiling at a lower temperature. So how do we use table H? So here's an example of a question. What is the vapor pressure of ethanol at 40 degrees Celsius? So the first thing you do is you find the ethanol, then you locate 40 degrees Celsius, which is here. So it's important to note that the bottom goes by 5, so each line goes by 5, but the vertical axes go by 10, so don't make that mistake. So we find 40 degrees Celsius, I go up to the ethanol line, and then I'm going to go across and find out the vapor pressure. And we'll see here, if this line is 10 and this line is 20, we say the vapor pressure here is about 17 kilopascals, and they'll give you a range of acceptable answers. Let's see another example. What is the boiling point of water at a pressure of 30 kilopascals? So in this case, I'm going to locate 30 kilopascals of pressure. So the first line is 10, we have 20, and we have 30. And we're going to go all the way across to water. And then we're going to go down, and we see the temperature is at the 70 degrees Celsius mark. So the boiling point of water at 30 kilopascals would be 70 degrees Celsius. Let's check your understanding. Can you determine the vapor pressure and boiling point of a substance using table H? At this point, you should be able to determine what affects boiling point, differentiate between boiling and evaporation, and determine the vapor pressure and boiling point of a substance using table H in our reference table.